the engine removal process for a 2006, for probably any year, Chevy HHR, 2.2 or 2.4 liter, doesn't matter. Doing this because I originally had water in the oil, and uh, that's that engine right there. Uh, couldn't get it, couldn't figure out what the heck it was. I pulled the cylinder head off, changed the head gasket after 205,000 miles, changed it out, and it went another 2,000 before it had the same problem, even worse. So, I uh, went ahead and pulled it out, uh, pulled the head off, I put water straight into the water jackets here, and it just ran right out of the oil pan. So, I'm pretty sure this block is toast. And good motor, went 200,000 miles, uh, changing the oil when the computer said it was time when it got down about 15 or 20 percent and uh so now i bought a rebuild engine i'm not going to say who from but they've been pretty good so far except uh dealing with the issue i had no uh oil pressure with this thing the scary part is i didn't have a light inside telling me i just had the the racket that this thing makes with no oil pressure and I pulled, I don't have it out now, but I pulled the, after it being running about 15, 20 minutes, I pulled the oil filter cap, and of course the oil filter's in there, and it was just as dry as a bone. There's no oil circulating whatsoever. I had pulled the valve cover, and uh, it was just bone dry. So we've got no oil circulation, so now I'm pulling it out to send it back. They've been pretty good about uh, responding, keeping in touch, and whatnot. So it's pulling, it's, it's coming out again today, and uh, it's going out on Monday. So what I've done here, I've already got the intake off. Uh, most of the cables go around the front of this thing, so I have labeled every cable with tape and where it goes on the engine that is an excellent idea uh, it really makes putting it back together so much easier faster and there's no guesswork as to where everything goes and typically if you've put everything back where it's supposed to go you just have a, a start up and check for leaks and there's no issues and everything works good uh, this engine when i got it had a uh I gave like three codes right off the bat. One, which was my fault because I failed to label or actually install this uh, hose that I can't remember what it goes to, but it goes on the intake manifold and that's a huge vacuum leak if you don't get that on. So I took care of that, no problem. And then it had two other codes for the intake and exhaust camshaft timing, which is out of whack. So, I had to pull the timing cover, reset all of that with the timing chain, and then put it all back together and the codes went away, but still had the hell of a racket from no oil pressure, and that's an ugly sound. So, uh, it's coming out, The uh, all the cables are labeled with tape, The um, and it's written on there, like this one goes to the... This one goes to the mass airflow sensor on the air cleaner. So I just abbreviated that. And I also have uh, just a very small box of bolts that I've labeled what's in here. Crank position sensor and starter uh, for this bag. And uh, sorry for the camera work. I don't do this. Uh, everything's labeled where it goes very very handy when you're putting things back together I mean it's easy to take stuff apart a lot harder to put it back together and actually work right so save yourself some time label everything uh, this cable in the back here gets uh, labeled where everything goes at one time I actually put this thing back together and I had this cable and this cable switched around uh, one goes to the fuel injectors, maybe it wasn't this one, and this one goes to the throttle body. I had the throttle body and the fuel injector cable switched around, which th this will do. They're the same. 
So don't count on uh, the principle of, oh, the cables only fit one place because on this car, that's not the case. You can get these two switched and that really makes the computer act weird and you got to take it to somebody with a scan tool that can uh, oh, not reset the codes, but uh, there's some other function that my scan tool won't do. Anyway, so don't do that. Definitely. Matter, matter of fact, I marked this one white and I also marked the throttle body so I know those two go together for in case that ever happened again. So it doesn't happen again. Anyway, uh, that is it for this video. And uh, when I get the new engine back, or if this one's repaired or whatever, uh, I'll post another video. On a side note, when I got this engine, these things are supposed to be rebuilt. Completely gone through, cleaned, everything measured, inspected, all new parts put in, all that good stuff. Except for this one came... Oh, I, I doubt you can see it. Anyway, down here is dirt that I scraped off. You can kind of see it uh, here that uh, they painted over the whole thing and they painted over some muddy engine grime which means they didn't clean the block. So uh, this whole rebuild has been suspect uh, from day one. So I've been extra careful. Another issue with these HHR motors or 2.4 Ecotex is the timing chain tensioner, which is in the back. Back here, very, very important. Uh, I believe those things break once in a while. So I replaced it with a new one. This is the old one. And you can tell it's the old one because you can still see the, the pitted rust in the top of this thing. So this has not been replaced. They just kept the old crappy one that came with it. And the spring inside of these things breaks. And then, of course, it doesn't provide chain tension. And your uh, chain ends up skipping a tooth or uh, braking and you have valves hitting pistons inside because it's an interference motor where you don't want any interference so it allows it and then 